Ladies and gentlemen, we do apologise for the overcrowding on this train. That is due to too many people being on this train. <laughs> at a Sussex comedy night, there's only one joke in town, but it's becoming harder to laugh at. And they've said that if you're planning on travelling this festive season, that it's best to take emergency provisions with you. They are all too used to booking artists who don't make it because of the disruption. Comedically, it is a gift. It is a gift, but... Quite honestly, it's not a joke anymore. It isn't a joke. Um, we can laugh so much, but when it comes to affecting people's lives and people's livelihoods, then no, that's not a joke. At the University of Chichester, they've been looking at the impact of the strikes in terms of lost GDP, the value of goods and services produced as a measure of the economy. We went to the Office for National uh, Statistics and used their figure of GDP per employee. That works out around about £61,500 uh, per annum. Uh, we uh, used a, an average uh, working year of 230 days and that comes out as a, a figure lost of £270 a day. The, at the highest level, the total impact um, per strike day is probably £9.5 million at a conservative level and perhaps as high as a, a, £11 million uh, if we look at a broader level of impact. In a nearby warehouse, they've been losing as much as 20 working hours a week. Syrat is among the largest manufacturers and distributors of painting tools in the UK. Effectively, it's about the ability of people to move products uh, from the warehouse onto vehicles and out to customers. Um, when we've got limited staff here, obviously that, that, that productivity is reduced. Um, so we're trying to do the same amount of volume of work with less people, which obviously has an impact. There are some who have benefited. At a taxi firm in Bognor, long-distance drivers have seen a boost in trade, but it's at the expense of local people left stranded by the strikes. People tend to usually get the train down to Gatwick from here, and where there's no trains on that day, they've booked their holidays months ago, and then they've had to sort of at the last minute phone us to say, look, there's no trains tomorrow, can you take us to Gatwick? Nine times out of ten we can fit them in, but we have had the odd occasion where we just haven't got the availability. One of the biggest concerns is that it reduces the attractiveness of this region as a place to do business. So the risk is that investment is discouraged and ultimately goes elsewhere. What it's highlighting is that there's very little resilience in the infrastructure. So, for example, with the, the rails going out, that knocks out a connection puts pressure onto the road network and the road network is failing as well. And so that's saying to people there's not enough resilience, we shouldn't be investing in this area. For those trying to fill job vacancies, they've never seen it so bad. We're not saying come here, let's um, come down to uh, West Sussex and do business because we're, we're having trouble doing business. Uh, we're having trouble getting around. We're having trouble just getting to and from work. That's not selling. It's not selling with Sussex. But this song is, uh, is called, it's, it's called Southern Rail. They say laughter is coast the coast best coast medicine, coast but coast the coast jokes coast are getting coast increasingly coast bitter. Coast yeah, we this study into lost productivity suggests it's cost the economy around £300 million. It's likely to be much higher and doesn't account for the loss of sales or the impact on personal finances for people across the region. Southern Rail Every day is an endless stream of cancelled trains and 